Hey everyone, um, thank you for stopping by and watching me play with my new art supplies. Here we've got the watercolor paper that is being released at the Crafters Workshop. This is by Ken Oliver and the neat thing about this paper is not only it's heavy, heavy, heavy duty, but the one side is uh, rough and the other side is smooth. So if you're like me and you like the hot pressed watercolor paper for some projects, then you can use the smooth side, but you'll still get the durability of the cold pressed watercolor paper. And if you like the cold pressed, you can use the rough side. Anyhow, moving on. I also have here the DecoArt Fluid Acrylics um, and also the DecoArt Americana paints. I just wanted to pull out my larger size bottles to let you know that you can get these all in a larger size, either the eight ounce for the fluid acrylics or the Americana multi-surface satins, or the 16 ounce for the Americana premium paints. So, moving on, here I am. I'm gonna go ahead and douse this paper with some uh, water. That way I can go ahead and just smush my paints on there. I'm not really um, doing much except putting a base coat on here so that I can go ahead and use my stencils next. So at this point, I'm just going to be quiet and let you listen to the music while I move some paint along the paper, and I'll be back in a little bit. But again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll be right back.
All right, here you see a stencil that just came out. This one's by Julie Fay Fan Bowser. Um, you can find this under Bowser Designs. This is the Crafters Workshop Stencil 889, and it's called Dash V, as in Victor. Now, if you watched Julie's video, she showed you not to be afraid to cut this up into separate little stencils. And at first I was like, you want me to take a large stencil that I just got and cut it up? But then I was like, oh my gosh, what a great idea. So I cut it up and I took my brightest colored because, well, you know me in neons, uh, mask or uh, what is this called? Duct tape. And I went ahead and made a border around the stencils that she suggested because you have a thin edge and you always get paint all over your fingers. Granted, it didn't stop me from getting paint on my fingers. But I did take the stencil and I cut it apart and put the tape around it. And now I have these beautiful little um, geometric dashes and V's and lines. And I'll tell you what, for just a go-to art journal stenciling kit, this would probably be one that I would take with me. Um, what a smart, um, ingenious design. And I definitely think if you're going to get one stencil for your craft shop uh, this because you're on a budget I would definitely consider this one uh, again this is TCW889 and it is called Dash V now I am going to be taking pretty much similar paints to what I used on the base coats but I'm also taking different values of them or I'm taking opposites now I constantly am always putting colors on top of other colors that should not be put together. So if you're going to put lime green or yellow green on top of purple or even on top of pink, you have to make sure that your first layer is completely dry. Because if you don't do this, um, when you do that, you're going to end up with a lot of mud. Um, I've been doing this a long time and if I'm in a hurry, um, one of my little tricks is to take some of the TCW white gesso and I will use that first through the stencil, let it get a little bit dry, and then I'll use the other color. And that way it can sit on top of a color that it usually couldn't sit on top of. And you don't get any bleed through and you don't get that muddy color. But when you do use the white before you use the bright color, you have to be really careful um, not to press too hard because the white can bleed underneath the stencil. So you want to make sure you cover all the white with your bright colors. Um, I can go over this more in detail later, but as you can see here, I'm just going to quickly, without any rhyme or reason, add um, using these, this one stencil I cut up into like five, I think it cuts up into, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five sections, and it's going to be used with a whole bunch of different colors to add some second layer to the, to the pieces, the papers that I did. Now, I only made four papers, and I think in that package from the Crafters Workshop, it only comes with four papers. And again, I don't know the cost of this, but the paper is amazing. So I, again, am going to shut up, let you watch this, and I'll come back when I get to the next step.
right, so I have two stencils here. The first is TCW906 Faceted Star, and this was designed by Rebecca Meyer. Um, this stencil is TCW906 Faceted Star by Rebecca Meyer. Now, if you look really close at this stencil, you have the points of a star. Even though it looks like a circle with all these dashes, actually there are points within the dashes. So if you were to tape this up in certain ways, you could get different looks from it. Um, here I'm just taking some of the DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylic in white. Uh, I tend to use fluid acrylics a lot when I'm creating art papers because they have a little bit of a sheen and they are more of a powdery look and they dry much quicker than regular heavy body acrylics. Now where the white circles in the center came out, I'm using a baby wipe and some of the pattern in the stencil to remove the white because I don't want to have solid blocks of circles in my work. Um, this one here is designed by me. Oh, I'm so proud to say that I designed this stencil. This is TCW899 Striped Mandela. This was the second stencil I designed for the Crafters Workshop. The first one is Fancy Mandela, and I think that one is TCW898. Um, I'm really proud of these little babies. This is my first time designing a stencil. Heck, it was my first time ever taking one of my drawings and converting it into a workable vector file, which I didn't even know what a vector was six months ago. But, you know, this just goes to prove that grandmas and old ladies like me can figure this stuff out too. Um, as you can see, when I do stenciling, I like to use the stencils in different ways. Now with my mandelas the way they work is there's a flower in the center, there's a second border in the middle, and there's the third border on the outside. So you actually can use different parts of the stencils to get a different look on your paper. And I'm going to do that throughout here. You'll see where I'm just using the petals on the outer ring or I'm using the flower in the center. And the same with all the other stencils. You'll put them on where you put the paint through the stencil. And at other times, you take the paint and put it on the paper. And then use a baby wipe to remove the paint through the stencil. Now here you see, I'm just using the outer border. And I'm adding it to the stencil that was by Rebecca Meyer. And look, I just made a different design. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish. Again, this is only going to be these two stencils and I'm going to be using just the white paint to get the finished pieces that I want here. So I'll come back at the next step. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and cut the papers. Now, first I just cut the paper in half, and then I took the paper and I cut it in half again. Now, this is on the long part, um, and I'm going to give you measurements and they'll just be off. Just know it's an 8.5 by 11 paper, and the first time I cut it, I cut it in half and then half again, and you end up getting 8 um, ATCs out of it. No, they are not the standard ATC side. So if you want them to be the perfect ATC side, size, not side, um, then you can go ahead and trim them. 
for me and the way I'm doing this, it works for me that they're a little bit off. Um, but I end up getting eight out of each sheet. And I didn't want to bore you with having to watch me do this because my blade on this is dull and I look like an idiot trying to push it through and hold the thing still. So, <laughs> anyhow, here you can see all the ATC cards that I did. Um, I like to mix them all up so you can't see which is which, but it's amazing how they each come out looking like little bits of art. Now here I'm going to take one of the, um, I think this is a Tracy something stamped by uh, Paper Artsy. Um, I can't think of her last name, but it is by Tracy and I love her art. It's so cool. I mean, if I had her talent and her imagination, jeez, I'd be a billionaire. I just love that stuff. But I'm taking some embossing, um, uh, what is it called, stamp, using that. And I'm taking some of Lindy's Gang embossing powders, and I'm just sprinkling them on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun to go ahead and dry this. Um, this is not a sparkly finish, it's just a dull, it's kind of like a, it crossed between charcoal black and dark brown. I kind of liked it, it had a velvety look to it. Now here, I'm just going to go ahead and darken the edges because it was just cut paper. It looked too white to me, and I didn't want it to look brand new. Now I know I have that little thing you can drag on there that rags the edges off, and I am going to look for that thing. I know it's somewhere in my art room. I know everybody probably says that. It's somewhere in my art room. I just don't remember where. But anyhow, these are the papers that I, or the little flowers and bits and baubles that I cut out a long time ago. I'm not sure if you remember. I took and made some art papers out of watercolor paper. And then I went ahead and stamped all of Tracy's stamps. I got four of the paper artsy sets, all of them by Tracy. And I went ahead and I cut them out in the white with just the black stamp. And then I also did them on the watercolor paper and I cut every single one of these things out. So if you look through my Instagram stories, you'll probably find a picture of all of them. Now here I'm taking the little center of the flower and I'm using color on top of the black and white but I'm also gonna stack about three of those little dots. Now, I never used dots. I didn't really, I just thought they were cheap little things, but those things are pretty cool. I have the thicker dots. I got them on clearance, I think. You know, I actually got them at AC Moore right before they went out of business when they were having their big sale, which is just really breaks my heart. I really loved AC Moore, and I'm kind of bummed that they're gone. And again, I just last night got out all the little bits and baubles around my art room. I'm always cutting papers or I'm always um, printing out papers. I love to buy collage papers or get collage papers or make my own collage papers and cut things out and tear them out and have them ready to go. And I've done this quite a bit. And believe it or not, out of all the stuff I've done and have ready to go, I hardly ever use it. It's like I put it in a baggie or I put it in a bin and then I say, okay, it's here for when I need it. But then I forget I have it or I'm always working on such huge projects that little bits aren't used in them. Um, a lot of my canvases are at least two foot by two foot and or 24 inches by 24 inches. And that is using a big piece. So you have to fill that up with bigger things. And a lot of these little things that are used for journaling or artist trading cards, I don't get to use that often. That's why I decided to make the artist trading cards instead. Now here I'm just going to add some words to it and stick them on there. And I'm not really going crazy here. I just love the color and the look of the funky flowers. I'm not even going to trim that little circle flower on the left because I like the way it overhangs. I think it's cool. Um, uh, always get your little white um, gel pen out. If you're like me, I buy these by the box. I have a box of, I think it comes with 12 of them in it, and I always have a box of these because I go through so many white gel pens, it's not even funny. And I wish I could get the black gel pens like that. I think the Nikki, one of my friends, turned me on to the uh, Nikki Green. She turned me on to the, the glaze pens, and I didn't know what those glaze pens did until I used them, and the way they puff up and they just, 
edge things beautifully. Now I'm addicted to them and I can't find the black ones anywhere. So anyhow, this one I'm just giving it some highlights and after this I'm going to work on one more and that'll be it. So I only did two for this project just to show you the different um, things you can do with the artist trading cards. Uh, they're quick, easy little mini masterpieces that you can create and I think it's fun to just send them off to friends. Even people you don't know, um, people are always looking to do swaps online. I've done a few and I have some that have come all the way from across the world. I have a couple from Croatia. I mean, I have them from everywhere and I think it's really neat to pull them out and look at them sometimes and just get some ideas. So. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much again for watching. Take care, and have a great weekend, and if you're in America, tonight's the Super Bowl, so I'm going to go watch that. Take care. Bye.